How's it going, everybody? Rybrand here today, and we are back with our Anaheim Ducks franchise mode. And in the offseason, after a year five playoff run that didn't quite go our way, and things just aren't working out for this team, um, I'm not sure what is the problem with this team. I hope you guys have at least a clue, because I'm starting to run out of ideas and options here, and just saying we might just be getting... Uh, screwed by the sim. It could be goaltending. I don't know, but we'll find out in this episode. Before we get started, guys, make sure to subscribe. We are on the road to 3,000. We just crossed 2.7 thousand. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers. I'd absolutely love to hit it um, as soon as possible. I, I, I never thought I'd be this 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 big uh, as far as a subscriber base, but you guys make it so much fun to play Chell every year. Make sure to leave a like, too, if you're going to go on and enjoy the video. Uh, but without further ado, guys, let's jump into this one. As you guys can see, the Colorado Avalanche are the Stanley Cup champions. And, you know, whatever. <laughs> there is the draft lottery. Ooh, where? Oh, my God. Carolina via Detroit. The Carolina had the number one odds at the lottery because Detroit traded their pick. I wish I could go back and see, like, what was that trade because that sounds ridiculous. With the Columbus Blue Jackets jumping from 11 up to 1, obviously we made the playoffs, so we're not going to be in there. And we didn't acquire anybody's draft pick either. But I can't believe Detroit traded their first overall pick. What are they thinking? Oh my goodness. Eric Stahl retired, uh, went back to Buffalo. Getzloff has officially retired as a Pittsburgh Penguin. God, I hate that. He didn't want to come back, though, so I let him walk. Bergeron retires. Crosby retires. Yandel, Kane, Burns. Weber, and then Nick Foligno, Jamie Benn, Lars Eller, Shattenkirk, Petrie, Henrique, uh, Brody, Backlund, Gardner, Kulikov, Clutterbuck, Eberle, Gagne, Broussard, oh my god, P.K. Subban retires as well, Stepan, Tyler Johnson, uh, Martinez, Delzat, whoa, a mass exodus, Sammy Votnin, what are all these, everybody's just retiring right now, guys, everybody's gone. Uh, Xavier Olette retiring at 32. That's pretty young. I guess as a free agent, you never know. But Samian Varlamov, Ben Bishop, whose career I believe is officially over in real life. So shout out to him. Uh, unfortunately, ended too soon. Didn't get to end on his terms. But hopefully he, he's, he's okay and, um, and, and, you know, enjoys his retirement. Uh, Brian Elliott retires. Thomas Grice, Miko Koskinen, Stalock, Kincaid, Picard, Barube. Okay. All right. So... A lot of big names retiring. Getzloff is now a coach. Is that say he was a coach for the Pittsburgh Penguins? Oh my God, that's crazy. Um, let's view the draft class and take a look at some of the players. We didn't know too much about the top end talent. We know stuff here and there. Uh, Ruben Sylvester, a good name, three years away. Three years away for Raphael Hill as well and looks pretty good, honestly. Uh, and then there's Ter Ivan Tarasov. We have no idea anything about them. I would like to see their uh, uh, interview, how far away they are, what's their player type, uh, play style. Let's talk about that. And then I always like to ask them how far away from the NHL they are, um, just because that helps me make an informed decision. If it's between a toss-up, a uh, few seasons, so uh, three years. Okay, so he's three years away. Everybody's about three years away in this, um, in this window here at the end of the first round. Uh, he's a two-way forward, three years away, and then I'm going to ask him what his greatest strengths are, just because I'd like to know more so than, you know, oh, what are you bad at? I'd like to know what he's good at, because, you know, sometimes guys can be really good in the sim with something, and he's a skater. So, skaters don't really help us, because we're not playing the game. If we played the game, I would probably care about the skating category just a bit more, uh, but since we're not playing, I, it's, you know, not the end of the world to me, but he's one bar medium elite. Uh, two-way forward, this two-way forward, Ruben Sylvester. Do we know anybody else? Do we know any good... Oh, God. We don't know just about anything. We got a three-bar low elite here, left winger. Ooh. Okay, Maxime Alexiev. Alexiev? Yeah, I guess it's Alexiev. Guys, I got to also say that if you haven't noticed, uh, they now have, like, the Russia, the USA, the actual Hockey Federation uh, logos up in the corner, and it's just so much better than the what the flag used to be. It's just the... That looks so good. Uh, but apparently there's a gem of an offensive defenseman, John Bancroft. Uh, three years away, projected to go like in the third round, early third round, could be a second round pick for us. But as far as, you know, players that we know, there's Kuminski, uh, Brian Kuminski. Uh, is three years away as well, 89th uh, overall. So, you know, not really... Our scouts, uh, the auto-scouting just does so bad. Uh, just really does do so bad. 
Uh, but we got to figure out something because I, I do like this team a lot. I like the structure we've got going with Santivori and Zegris. I feel like we do need a... Oh, God. Uh, Mason McTavish. We can give... Oh, wow, he's already up to an 87. Can I give him four years at 7 million? I mean, five years at 7.25, I feel like would be good. He'd be 28 at the end of that contract. That's fine. Sam Steele does want a contract extension. Interesting to see that. Does want a lot of money. I'm not going to hand out contracts right now, other than the one I handed out to McTavish. But let's go ahead and jump into the entry draft. And I kind of want to make... I feel like I want to make a trade. I feel like I want to make a trade. But, like, at the same time, take a look at our forward core. Let's... Quick glance. We got Santavori, Zeris, McTavish. Strom, Veseline, and Steel. But Steel is expiring. So we'll just ignore Steel for now. So it'll be Krabs. Comtois, Perot, Tracy, Akil Thomas, Rotzelein, and Gruel. I mean, oh, it's a very good team. Do we maybe need one more bona fide first liner? Although McTavish is probably going to be that 92 offensive awareness, 89 passing. He's got 85 wrist shot accuracy. He's got an X factor, so we'll get chemistry on that first line. Uh, he's not as good as faceoffs as, uh, as Zegris, so he's going to play uh, the wing. But then we take a look at the defensemen. We have Drysdale, Chernak, Lindholm, McDonald, Sward, and, well, Hag. Hag's probably on his way out the door. Um, we'll see. Did anybody want him? Uh, we actually can get us some seventh round picks for him. Uh, or Jaden Schwartz or Mason Appleton. I'm just going to ignore those trades for now. It might. It very well may be goaltending. I don't know, guys. Like, I don't want to get rid of John Gibson. He's got two years left on nine and a half million. I mean, he's been good, right? Uh, solid. I is, can we say it's goaltending holding us back? I mean, not this year. It was not goaltending this year. I don't know what it was this year uh, that held us back, but something clearly did. Uh, what, what can we get for our 22nd overall pick? Yul Levy, a fifth and peak. Jake Bean, a third and a fourth. Dumba, a fourth and Hronik. Drew Doughty, one more year of Drew Doughty. Interesting. I'm, I've already done that with the LA Kings, uh, where I've taken one of their legends and it didn't work out. Yeah, like, let me take a second and a third for these. Yeah, no, I'm not moving down. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I follow Domi, Stetcher. Yeah, so I think we're just going to end up taking whoever's there at 22. Uh, let's go ahead. Sim to pick number 22, but jumping up to first overall was the Columbus Blue Jackets. And honestly, not the strongest year to do that like it's a it's a fine draft class plenty of like elite talent in the in the first four right but it's just nobody's going to be a, a contributor until next year at the earliest for these guys so anyway there's Salcido, Kartanen, Owens they want me to take Hill uh Rafael Hill's three years away I don't know anything about that guy or this guy this guy's potentially three years four years ah uh, uh oh Three bar medium elite potentially to Dawson Maher. Okay, okay. I'm glad I he's got potentially an X factor too. Listen, even if he's a medium top six, this guy could be an absolute steal. Could be close to ready. I don't mind his scheme fit at all. Six foot one, 191. We're gonna take him, and he is a medium top six sniper with the make it snappy superstar ability. There we go. He's got a pretty good shooting category. He's 18, 66, medium top six. He's somebody that I'm, wow, I'm really happy we took that pick over, you know, anybody else. Uh, there's Hill. I mean, Raphael Hill is also an X-Factor with close quarters and magnetic. Uh, he's slightly worse. He's a right winger. He's 5'10", 171. This guy is 6'1", 191. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but, oh, why did it just go there? Uh, anyway, so I guess I could have taken either one of them and I would have been happy. But I thought, you know, we might have had something there with Maher. Uh, but we'll just move on to the next pick. Pick number 54. Uh, we miss out on nothing to spec. This is not a good draft class, guys. I hope I hope I can hit again. Uh, we got a two-bar low elite, Sergei Kaigorodov. Kaigorodov, uh, potentially three years away. MacArthur is one bar. Isaiah MacArthur, but he's potentially five years away. There's Edward Rogers, who we know for a fact uh, is uh, three years away. Uh, Kaigorodov, though, is... Potentially, it could be better than that. We'll keep scrolling down because last time I did scroll down, we got a low top six gem here. Some back-to-back -back gems in Ashton Clem. He's three years away. Uh, and Bo Chow is also uh, three years away as a low top four defenseman. I don't know. All these low whatever. I just, I feel like I'd rather take the shot. I mean, on, on some of the other players. Ooh, a couple two-bar medium elites here. Four years away. And then this guy, Elliot Siegel is potentially three years away, probably four years away. He's five foot nine offensive defense, but you know what? 
I'm going to take him, and then I'm probably going to take that other guy with the next pick. So we're going to go ahead, select him. He's medium top six, and we are going to pass on Kaiga Rodov, who's a low top four. Wow, there's so many low. This is a really shitty draft class, isn't it? Holy smokes. Another low top whatever. Uh, Brian Kaminsky is three years away. You know what? He's three bar. I mean, they're saying John Bancroft is a gem. Three years away, low elite. Uh, wait, you know what? Why don't I just take the shot on it? We got Jim Khan here, who's two bars, medium elite. I'm going to trust the gem and see. We'll go with that. John Bancroft is low top four. I will take it. There's Apple. We didn't look at him. Farrell was at the top of the list, I believe. Uh, we'll just keep going pick by pick. There's Kaminsky, the medium top six. Okay, so he was medium top six. Probably better than Bancroft, but that's that's fine. If I see a medium elite pop up, I'm going to be sad. Melichar is not a name I remember ever looking at, so we just must miss up, missed out on him because we didn't do a very good job scouting. I sometimes ignore scouting during the season, and then I'll forget it halfway through a video, and I'm not going to stop the recording just to go um, do, do scouting. So, Ola Olvstad... Uh, there's Richard Seebeck and then Stefan Koch. Ooh, um, nobody, wow, they all suck. Everybody here sucks. Riley McKenzie is five years away. Low elite, could still be good. Uh, medium starter, Nord, Par Nordgren. No thanks. Two bar medium elite, Yanni Korpikoski. He's three, uh, he's at, I'm going to take, there was somebody at the top that I think was like three, four years away, five years away, four years away. We're going to take Ola Olstead. Olvstad, uh, medium top six. Jeez, this is just... I mean, I don't even want to keep drafting at this point. I just want to skip to free agency and do something uh, productive. Or, like, I feel like something that's going to actually help the team. There's Elliot Cavallo. Cavallo, probably. There's Kurt Wong, five years away. Low elite. Uh, low elite here, one bar. Victor Schroeder, four years away, maybe? Um, medium fringe starter. Probably at best medium starter. So, I'm not going to take the shot there. Good God, there's there's literally no reason to keep drafting. So I'm gonna just back out here. It's the it's the fifth round. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, McDonald, Nermi, and Clark. Uh, oh, and Allen. I guess I had an extra seventh. Anyway, nothing too spectacular coming out of that draft class. We do need to sign a goalie coach and an assistant coach and a bunch of scouts and uh, Zellweger and Dostal. McTavish has decided. Let's go. Okay. So he is back. McTavish is back on what I would say is a pretty darn good deal. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five years at 7.25 is nothing to scoff at, but only with nine and a half million dollars in cap space. Dostal, I'm going to qualify him, qualify his RFA. Uh, do I want to spend three and a half million on a goaltender is the question. Uh, we're going to sign Jaden Williams and let him play. He, oh, wait, that's that's the ELC? No way. Is that the ELC? Holy smokes. Um, anyway, we're going to play Lilia and Williams, I guess. Erickson Act will just release him because I want to give these guys the ice time uh, they need. But Dostal here, do we give him the three and a half million? Let's take a look at all expiring contracts. Tracy, Hag, Rotzelein, and Bellows, Fortier, Zellweger. Zellweger is 22, 78. He could be something. Same thing with Fortier. Gabriel Fortier is probably not going to be anything. Uh, Watt, Watt here? Is it? Yeah, Zach Watt. Zachary Watt. Um, okay. Nobody else too exciting or important. Uh, Sam Steele, we might just let him walk because we take a look at, like, we'll go just build the roster out, right? We've got Gibson and Dostal. I could always trade Gibson. He's been okay. We're probably not going to re-sign him after this year. I think I might turn the reins over to Dostal. Dostal hasn't been spectacular, but he hasn't been bad. Hasn't really gotten the opportunity uh, in the playoffs. He hasn't been much better either. Um, yeah, his stick high is an 88, which is pretty good. He's got a good stick side. He's got good endurance. Yeah, I I'm going to give him a shot. We're going to give him uh, the opportunity to be uh, the, st oh, the starter going forward. We'll try and give him 3.75 for two years. Uh, test him out as the starter. I have to sign a backup, but defensively, we've got Drysdale, Chernak, Lintel, McDonald, Sward, and then Merkley. I can probably let Hag walk. He wants 2.3 million. We will let him walk. Merkley, Henriksen, uh, Zellweger here wants, oh, a really cheap contract. So we'll qualify him just in case he doesn't accept it for some reason, but he should accept this. That's exactly what he wants, and I'm willing to give it to him. 
Uh, Kluchek here will offer him a contract, right? He's medium top four defenseman. Uh, medium top six, low top four. These guys, I'll release them. I don't think they're ever going to hit their potential or even, you know, make up a sizable portion of the uh, AHL for us. Uh, down here, Rafalski's a seventh defenseman. Wow, I've taken a lot of defenders. But, hey, there's Jans. There's Janes, Robinson, Janes, Janis, maybe? Offensive defenseman. We took him in the seventh round um, in 2025. This uh, Not this past draft, but the one before it, so last year. Anyway, taking a look at the forwards. Uh, we have Santivori, Zegris, McTavish, Strom, Veselainen, Kumtwa, Krebs, Perot, Gruel, Thomas, and then Montgomery and Sherwood. Honestly, I kind of want to give Pete Montgomery, finally get him a shot at the NHL. So somebody here uh, wants, yes, Fortier wants to two, offer him a contract. Do that. Does Kiefer Bellows want a two-way contract? Yes, he does. Two years? Yeah, we'll give him two years on a two-way deal. Rotes Alainen does not want an extension, so I will happily let him walk. Uh, Tracy does not want an extension. I'll qualify him, see what he wants. He wants 2.3. I could always move on from him. He's never been particularly good, right? He's <laughs> he's never been great for us. I mean, 25... Actually, his first season was pretty good. Last season was pretty much a down year. I'm going to qualify him, but not sign him. And I think I don't think I can afford Sam Steele. I mean, I guess I could, but I just have too many players at that point. So I'm going to release... Sam Steele, as unfortunate as that is. Some of you probably are are jumping for joy, though, um, because you guys wanted me to get rid of Sam Steele a long time ago. Uh, but Cleary, he's a medium top nine. We will offer him a contract. Uh, low top six, Paul. He's 22. He's never really going to be anything. Uh, Estrada, we'll give him a contract. Uh, Antila, we're going to release him because he's not going to be anything for us. We've got medium bottom six, Turner. Release him. Uh, I gave Valentenko a contract because it was low top nine, but I don't foresee him actually being anything for us. O'Regan and Kindop will check at, at later at a later date, uh, but for now I think we can just advance the day. Uh, I will assign the, uh, uh, re-sign the scouts and coaches. So guys, give me one second to do that here. We just have to spam offer contract. Although, should I really be offering these scouts a contract? Because considering that when I leave them to do their own thing and don't micromanage. Uh, they come back with absolutely nothing. They tell me that their favorite cereal is uh, is mini wheats, and they actually don't tell me how good they are as as a hockey player, right? Uh, just because this guy shops at Old Navy, I don't know if that's going to make him a good uh, fit for the for the team or not. But hey, maybe if we got a lot of Old Navy stands in the locker room, maybe he'll fit right in. Uh, anyway, let's. F uh, we have a goalie coach that likes to teach forwards. Um, we need an as AHL assistant coach. Um, but we have, wait, oh, no, we don't have an, a, uh, an NHL goalie coach, and we don't have an NHL assistant coach. Smiles wants to be a head coach, so I'm going to let him walk. I'm going to fire him, confirm, uh, and then we are going to take the goalie coach and promote him to an assistant coach, and then we're going to need to hire uh, an assist, uh, goalie coach and an AHL assistant coach, so there we go. We'll advance the day, see who resigned. Bellows is back, Dostal is back, Fortier is back. Um, these guys are all taking the contracts. Love to see it. Honor to join the team. Join the team. Join the team. There we go. So we are pretty much, I think, all signed up. We really don't have anybody that needs to be re-signed. And with seven million in cap space, we have enough to be dangerous. But I think I'm going to move on from Gibson. Give the starting job over to Dostal. I think he's good enough. And I think Gibson, you know, just it's time for time for a change. If you ask me, it's time for a little bit of change somewhere. I'm keep rolling through with the same rosters, expecting a different result. I got to try something new. So we're going to just sim to free agency here. Uh, Ava Sparks is back. Richard, hurrah, I don't even know how to say the name, but all these guys are back. Uh, guys and girls, the scouts are back. And Lor Laurent Traverse uh, is back as well. So we'll go sign some coaches as well. But I also want to check once we get to the first of the... Uh, 1st of July, when free agency opens, we will find trade for John Gibson. Now, we're probably not going to get too much for John Gibson. To, like, to be to be honest, it's not a lot of trade value, but we could get Ryan Nugent Hopkins. That's the only trade. Okay, so the only team real interested that called me when I put the flyer out there was they want to give us Ryan Nugent Hopkins. The next factor, who's an 84 overall, was absolutely putrid. Oh, my God. Was awful last season. His giveaway to takeaway ratio is actually not too bad. Doesn't hit. Doesn't block too many shots. Doesn't have a great face-off percentage. So uh, we would get the second as well. But I feel like we could do something better than that. Obviously, I'd love Savoie. 
or this McKenna guy. I mean, Darnell Nurse could be a good get, but he's 9.25. That's a ton of money. They want to get rid of Ryan Nugent Hopkins, so I guess that kind of makes sense. I'll flip through here. Detroit wants him. Detroit is known to give away their first round pick. Uh, Gibson will make him better. Uh, do I want to get something back for him, like some prospect? Or do I want to take a shot that uh, the Tr Detroit Red Wings are going to be awful again? I mean, they were the worst team in the league this past year. They got Moritz Sider, Zadina, uh, Raymond. Lucas Raymond here is a sniper. I mean, he could be a bona fide first line sniper. Uh, Zadina is a first line sniper. Uh, he's got one year left at 8.5, though. That's quite a bit of money. Uh, Dumba for one year at 6.1 million is not bad either. Dumba's actually a really good defender, but I don't feel like I need any more. Um,. Getting a first from the Detroit Red Wings feels like a decent idea because they don't have anybody coming up to save the roster, right? Uh, excuse me, rookie skaters. Let's go to overall. I mean, none of these guys are going to come in and instantly make the Detroit Red Wings a better team. It's a bad team, guys. They've got Zadina and Cider, and I mean, they're bet. I mean, this guy's their best forward, or, or I should say, best center. They do have Jackson Bass, who was taken in 2024 in the first round, so he's going to get better and is going to improve them. But by how much, I don't know, and they're going to have to pay him soon. I don't know. I feel like getting the first out of Detroit for John Gibson is not a bad idea if, if it even goes through. Because then we can continue to pump up the prospect core. But I kind of do want to get something to help us right now. So I'm going to move on from that idea. The Colorado Avalanche just won uh, the Stanley Cup. They don't really have a ton of cap space. They do have Wesley Lake, uh, who they haven't signed yet. Uh, an X-Factor top two elite defenseman with a bunch of, I mean, a bunch of X-Factors. The trade would be league approved. And if we take a look at our defenseman, right? I don't like how we can't grow into X-Factors. Like you would think Jamie Drysdale by now would grow into some kind of X-Factor, or at least a superstar ability. Uh, Chernak, Lindholm, McDonald, Sward, and then Merkley. So if it's McDonald, Sward, uh, Lindholm is leaving. I mean, we got a lot of people on expiring contracts here. I do want to re-sign McDonald as soon as possible, but Chernak and Lindholm are both leaving. I could go after a guy like Like, uh, but he, uh, I'd probably have to throw in more. The Calgary Flames want him. Uh, what is the, what do the Calgary Flames have as far as talent? They've got Kachuk. They've got Lindholm. They've got Goudreau, Mount, uh, Valimaki. Uh, they have Rasmus Ristolainen, so I don't know about that one. The Arizona Coyotes and their dominant team. Uh, they have Ruslan Datsuk here, the two-way defender that they drafted uh, seventh overall. They have, have they have Shane Wright. They've got Datsuk. Apparently, Datsuk doesn't want to sign with them and is, would, ra would rather test free agency. So he doesn't seem like he would fit our team very well, but a medium elite 88 overall with an X-Factor will always fit your chemistry. Um, he's not available on their trade block. Go figure. Uh, they really couldn't sign anybody, could they? Oh my god. There's Solomon Homer. I mean, none of these guys have really grown. Nathan Goucher, uh, Solomon Homer, they took fifth overall that same year. He's a sniper with a really, really good shot. Uh, the one T, the backhand beauty, the shotgun, uh, 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 and then Marcus Sugl Suglobov uh, is another sniper. I mean, he's really good as well. I mean, he's not as good, I think, as Solomon Homer. I think Homer is... Homer's freaking insane. Um, but I feel like, do I go after Solomon Homer for John Gibson? Uh, they want John Gibson. This guy's listed as a second line forward. He's medium elite at 22. I would need to sign him to a contract, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, I would have the money then. Like, look at that. I also all of a sudden go up to 16 million in cap space if I sign or if I trade for Solomon Homer. He fits the third line, but he's got shock and awe, backhand beauty, and make it snappy. He scores a boatload of goals, so putting him on the first line would be pretty good. I mean, he hasn't really done too much. I mean, he had th he had this year, but did they start taking him off? The they took him off. They de wow. Okay, you know what? I gotta save Solomon Homer. Uh, we're gonna propose the trade. Okay, yeah, uh, it's not there yet. But if I throw in a draft pick, like a third, is that gonna get it to go? It's too far off. How about a second? Would you guys take a second uh, and Gibson for Solomon Homer? Trade rejected. It's too far off, really. I mean, I, okay, I guess I can see that. Uh, skaters matching the block for them. Drysdale, McTavish, uh, Montgomery, Kluczek. I mean, Klusek, Klusek is 19, medium top four. I mean, he is an X-Factor defensive defenseman, so that gives him a little bit more. Um, but then there's Maher, who we just drafted, too. I mean, I don't know. There's some options here to 
make a swing a deal for Solomon Homer. I guess I'd have to find a trade for Homer and just kind of hope that they uh, decided to throw in Gibson in one of the deals, but we'll give it a try, right? Solomon Homer, Gibson, Sward, and Perot, Dostal, Drysdale, and Zellweger, uh, and McTavish a second in Dostal. So I like the Gibson, Sward, Perot deal. I don't like giving up Perot, though. I just, I just don't like it. Sward is 22, medium top four. I guess we could keep Merkley uh, in this instance. Perot, Perot, you guys can see. 82 sniper fits the first line so well but is he how far is he gonna grow right he's already 26 and solomon homer would just be a better version of him and he would probably jump up i don't know i feel like i can keep looking for john gibson son of the washington capitals they've got hawes i mean hawes is dawson that's dawson hawes yeah the playmaker it's kind of what we need is a, actually we need a first line power forward go get alexander ovechkin for another year or two uh there's jaeger Braden jaeger here the two-way forward, but no, I don't think there's any spectacular players there. The, I mean, there's really nothing here in uh, uh, Vegas for us. The Vancouver Canucks have got to have some talent. They've got, Con oh yeah, they do. They've got that Connor Bedard guy. Uh, but then there's Nicholas Paulson, the sniper with 98 wrist shot accuracy. Nine oh my goodness. Holy smokes. This guy is really freaking good. I would definitely go after Paulson. Um, I guess they don't, I mean, obviously... Gibson's not as valuable as I'm projecting him out to be, but the Philadelphia Flyers here, no real young talent. Uh, the New York Rangers, do they have any young talent? They should. There's Jermaine here, uh, medium elite two-way defenseman with X-Factors. That's pretty darn good. There's Alexi Lafreniere, uh, who I'm probably not going to get, but would be a really, really good steal for our first line. How Capo Caco is still medium elite, I don't know. Getting Alexi Lafreniere, yeah, no, it's woefully insufficient. I kind of figured that. Uh, the New Jersey Devils, uh, Holtz here. Holtz is not a bad guy to go after. I mean, he's not got a great shot. Um, so we might just pass on that one. Uh, Greer here is, I mean, Zachary Greer is a ridiculously good playmaker. He's not as good as you might think, though. Artem Kozlov was just taken. Uh, there's Tomasino, Philip Tomasino, the medium elite playmaker guy could put up tons of points. Like, exactly the kind of guy we want just dishing the puck, right? A takeaway to giveaway ratio of that good? I mean, this would work. Tomasino is one year left. He's 24. He's a first line forward and can play right wing. He's a playmaker, which would help us. He fits the second line, so maybe he wouldn't fit the first line. I don't know, but 95 defensive awareness, 92 passing, 98 offensive awareness, and I can chip him with a shot, and he was playing on their second line, putting up 56 points and got a, over 100 takeaways? I mean, he's not going to play center, right? He's a right. We need a first line right wing. Guys, I think this is the guy to go after. Plus, uh, do they have any goalies that they want to? Oh, <laughs> I can see why they uh, want John Gibson so badly. Rookie skaters. We could probably get another prospect like Melnick here. Ned Melnick is a medium top four offensive defenseman who already looks pretty darn good at 19. He's only 71, though. Uh, 73, yeah, obviously that's fine, but draft pick wise, I'm not going to get there first. They have no picks. I mean, I could try for the second. I didn't think that was going to go through anyway. Obviously, I'm not going to get the first and the sixth. I can't really raid them of picks next year. So I guess I'll go after Melnick here. I mean, there's there's Absut, uh, Merrick Absut, another playmaker they just took in the second round this year. Looks pretty darn good. He's 17, medium, top six forward. Uh, looks like he could grow pretty well. There's Melnick at 19. So really the question is, do I think Opsut is going to grow seven points in two years and be more valuable to this team than Melnick? Huh. The question is, I don't think I have a lot of defenseman prospects. Let's take a look at our, our rookie skaters, right? Actually, i just kidding. I have a lot of defenseman prospects. I actually have a lot of prospects here and there. But it feels like all of the uh, potential, like look at the pet potentials. A lot of forwards, but then we got some, actually, no, we got more uh, medium, to, okay, you know what, I'm going to go after the 17-year-old uh, Obsud, I like the upside of him, two right-wing playmakers, a position and a style that we need more of, so Tomasino and Obsud for Gibson, too far off, okay, okay, so that won't go through, that's fine, uh, we'll just have to make do, um, I guess I'll just go get a draft pick from next year, maybe a third next year, I don't know.
Uh, they want to give it up. Trade accepted. So Tomasino, welcome to the Anaheim Ducks. John Gibson is now gone. And we have 9.6 million in cap space. I love to see it. Uh, taking a look at the free agents too. We do need a backup goalie slash a starting goaltender. But Adam Volkvist and Clint Ryan is available. Clint Ryan, the medium franchise guy, does not want to go back to the... Um, Montreal Canadiens, I just saw the logo. Lambert doesn't want to go back. Holy smokes. Look at all the RFAs that hit free agency. Kirill Kaprizov, though, is the most notable UFA. Him and Denis Gurianov, Pacioretty, Boone Jenner, Warren Fogel. Yeah, so not a ton of amazing names out there right now. Uh, there's some pretty uh, ridiculous goalies. Carter Hart does not want a lot of money for a 27-year-old at 7.7. .7. We could upgrade goaltenders for cheaper, is that? Is that right? Mackenzie Blackwood. Uh, there's still Demko. I mean, I could, could go after Thatcher Demko. Uh, there's Jeremy Swayman down here. Splitting time there. I said I was going to give the starting role to uh, Lucas Dostal, but I mean, Demko's sitting right here, wants four years. He's a really good goaltender. Has he ever made the playoffs? He's not had really good years and has not been a great playoff goaltender. Uh, Carter Hart here, though. I mean, he's coming off a ridiculously good year. I mean, it's really... Feels really random, to be honest, uh, goaltender-wise, but let's take a look here. Good uh, good enough stick high, but his speed is really good. It says uh, athletic. That makes uh, makes the deal, uh, makes it up for him. Holy smokes. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood's really good, uh, but Carter Hart is the best goaltender on the market. Thatcher Demko here, just, just because he's not listed as elite versus Samsonov, I mean, you're saving two and a half million by going with Demko over Samsonov. And I feel like I gotta go after Demko. At some point, we've got it. You know what, we're doing it. We're going after Demko. Uh, I'm gonna give him four years at six million. Uh, that's definitely not a bad contract at all. I could actually, I'll give him 6.25. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're going for it. Screw it, we're going for it. Anyway, let's take a look at defensemen because that is an area where we do need to uh, pick it up. I think no top end defensemen, so really no reason for us to um, go nuts. Here's all the RFAs that just aren't getting signed. Let's take a look here. Um, here's an RFA offensive defenseman, low elite Kabanov. Uh, and then there's Evans here at 24. I mean, I kind of want to go after Yabanov. I mean, he wants, he wants 800,000 for one, wait, no picks required. Okay. And he's an X factor. <laughs> What? Uh, obviously, this guy's going to ask for too much. These guys probably will ask for too much. Uh, Loof here. I mean, he's not bad. Let's take a look at the forwards because I feel like we need to sign some forwards. Um, can I get UFAs, please? Actually, actually RFAs don't matter. Uh, I just need to know that they don't want a lot of money. Like Koskrinka or Alexiev. Alexiev. Maxime Alexiev? Oh, I said we were going to take him in the seventh round. We didn't, but I could end up signing him. So he was low elite. At 20, but I think I'd rather go after Koskiranta. Koskiranta. Uh, so we will go ahead, sign him to a ELC, and sign Alexiev to an ELC. Why not, right? They're 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 good, and they want almost nothing. Uh, so I think other than that, we're gonna let everything else ride. But hopefully Demko does decide to sign with us over whoever he's. Going with Alexiev does decide, Koskiranta just does decide to uh, join us. How are we looking as far as goalies? Uh, Thatcher Demko has two teams interested. We're one of them. Gustafsson is still an option. Carter Hart is still an option. Blackwood's still an option. So we can see uh, we've got options, right? Hart will probably sign with whatever team uh, is going after him. Carter Hart, offer him a contract. Vegas is going after him. Samsonov. Offer him a contract. The Rangers are going after Samsonov. And I believe it was Washington that was going after Demko with us. And I, I have to go after Demko. Um, it, but I'm sorry. Okay, so he does decide to go with back to his original team. Um, and Thatcher Demko is now an Anaheim Duck. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. The legend lives on. He's going to bring us a cup. I know it. I can feel it. Demko is the man for the job. Guys, I'm pretty excited with how this offseason shaped up. We re we shuffled the deck there at goalie. We got ourselves a bona fide first line forward. Let's go ahead and check out how these lines are shaping up at the start of the season. 
All right, guys, here we are, ready to get it underway for season number six. We're not going to get the season simulated, but obviously uh, this video has been long enough with the off season. but we are going to edit the lines and take a look at how things are going. And yes, that is what you want to see. A plus one up here with Philip Tomasino, Trevor Zegers, and Taro Santavori. It's nice to see Tomasino does fit the first line pretty darn well, even though they said he wouldn't. Uh, I just, I'm excited for his 98 offensive awareness, 92 passing, 95 defensive awareness. I mean, if he can put in anything close, uh, I mean, here he was still, I mean, his rookie season, they gave him the, uh, actually, no, he's been in getting increased in ice time, but not pl only playing 16 minutes a night is kind of ridiculous. He shoots like 12, 13%. So getting those shots up to, I mean, Look, he, 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 he played 16 minutes of time on ice. He's going to be playing 20 now. So that's going to be around probably 170. You can probably guess 40 more shots. Uh, and he's going to probably have in the 20s as far as goals. He's probably going to have more assists because he's playing with more talent. He's never made the playoffs before. So we'll see how he does there. But then we have Tracy. Oh, wait. No, we're going to have McTavish play here. McTavish is a uh, definitely good enough for the... For, wait, where the heck is uh, Peyton Krebs? Did they scratch? Oh, there he is. Uh, Tracy, Tracy did decide to accept his, uh, uh, qualifying offer, by the way. Uh, Gruel's still chilling down there. Gruel is, uh, been an up and down player. I mean, he's, he's in line for 30 points again this season, uh, is what we're seeing here. But Scratch is Forte and Bellows. Uh, Bellows fits the fourth line pretty well, and he's also a power forward, so maybe I want to throw him in there instead of a guy like Akil Thomas, who we signed last year. Six, 17 points, minus six. He doesn't shoot very much or well. I mean, he only played seven minutes a night, to be, uh, to be fair. Scratch, we'll just put uh, Kiefer Bellows in. Actually, Kiefer Bellows can play center, so we'll move him there. Kiefer Bellows, we'll give him a shot, right? It doesn't hurt. Uh, we've got Krebs with Perot and Comtois. Uh, Comtois can play center left wing, left wing center. Okay, so who's got the best face-offs? Se uh, yeah, okay. So Perot, we know he fits the first line to get us a plus two, but it's not something I'm really inclined on, on doing. Peyton Krebs there doesn't help. Peyton Krebs, where do you fit? Peyton Krebs fits the first line, understood. Um, so maybe I should have just stuck with Krebs instead of Perot a year ago. Uh, but he's, they're both, oh, he's a sniper, that's why. So Tomasino is a playmaker, playmaker, sniper. I'm very excited about that defensively. Um, McDonald didn't grow much at all, but I'm going to play him on the first line there with Jamie Drysdale. I, I believe in him. He's an offensive defenseman playing with the offensive defenseman, Jamie Drysdale, and I just, I believe in him. Lindholm Chernak getting a plus one there, and then Sward and Merkley. I mean, Merkley grew a point, which is certainly not bad at all to see. Uh, Merkley is another offensive defenseman, so Chernak is really our only defensive defenseman, isn't he? Interesting. Uh, and then in goal, we've got Demko and Dostal. Dostal's making his two years at 3.75. Demko, so we are spending around 10 million, so it's the same amount as last year on goaltenders. Uh, scratched is Fortier and Thomas. Gabriel Fortier doesn't really fit the uh, NHL roster. But I think this first line is now one that, you know, you can be really scared of. I know it's an 88 overall, but <laughs> his underlying stats are just that ridiculous, guys. I mean, his physical category brings him down. Otherwise, you know, if he had... 85 body checking and, and, you know, 80 aggressiveness. Like, he would be much, much higher overall. And I'm glad we got him for what we did. Uh, in the AHL, we'll just uh, head coach preferred lines. I guess this would be, like, I don't know what the head coach um, has. Oh, wait, is head coach preferred lines now what they mean by best lines? Okay. Um, I guess it's players that fit the lines the best. Hanu Yarvanen actually not looking too bad. I uh, like to see like to see him grow a little bit. Uh, Callan Lind here at medium top six. Maybe I want to play him over a guy like Galode for sure. Koskirinkta, the low elite, sure. Sap of Wally. Yeah, Pete Montgomery though. Uh, he's balanced cycle, balanced, balanced. He's a power forward. I feel like it's time to give him NHL time. Balanced. Oh yeah, coach. Balance cycle, balance block. He would fit the third line really, really well. But then we'd have to get rid of somebody. Do you guys think it's time to call Pete Montgomery up? Or do you think he needs a second year in the AHL? He did put up 60 points, 28 goals, was a plus 19. Where did he play last year? He played 19 minutes. Yeah. So you guys let me know. Callan Lynn down here can play with McCallum. I mean, McCallum's another guy that could come up eventually. Um, McCallum actually looks really well-rounded, just not going to be a guy that's going to put up goals because of his 73 wrist shot accuracy, but he does look pretty good, to be honest. 
Um, Carter Cleary here, he's fine. Uh, Paul, maybe above Cleary. Hanu Yarvanen above Sherwood. Just giving guys with potential a shot over guys without potential. Defensively down here, there's uh, Jorgen Henriksen, medium top four defensive defensive with a ridiculous defensive category. Took him in the first round in year number two. Um, he's got absolutely no offense to speak of, but he is a good defensive defenseman. Lavali is actually turning out to be not bad. Lucas Cormier, uh, Dominic Klusek, who we just signed this year. We drafted him in the first round a few years ago, is looking pretty good. Uh, I'll move him up there over Lavali, And then Ray McCutcheon is never going to be anything too spectacular. Uh, but Henriksen uh, down here would get us a plus with Cormier unless I did. Oh, so Henriksen and Cormier. There we go. Then Zellweger there can play with Klusek. Zellweger is a two-way offensive offensive defenseman. There it is. That's what it is. Um, I'm fine with the, these lines down here. And in goal, we've got Lilia and Jaden Williams, the medium elite Jaden Williams. At 20, hopefully we'll have a good season for us. Scratch down here is Yoshi, uh, Zachary Watt, uh, and Alexiev. So maybe I'll give Alexiev time over Maxime Valentenko. Valentenko out, scratched forwards. Nope, not Watt. Uh, Alexiev, there we go. Why not? He's going to be playing fourth line minutes in the AHL anyway. Uh, Ray McCutcheon out, and I think Watt is probably the guy I want to play because he's yeah he's got medium top four and he's a 72. Uh, he's an offensive defenseman, so we'll see. He would get a plus there, but I think we're going to leave him down there uh, like that. But uh, as far as the NHL is concerned, guys, I really think it's a, su a super strong... Top six. Strom actually, I think, regressed a bit, which is a little bit concerning to see. But he's got two, uh, three years left on his deal, so it's not the end of the world. He's really well-rounded. Uh, I could move these guys up here and do something like that. McTavish and then Strom down there. Uh, and then play. I actually kind of like this. Strom is a third-line center. I mean, Strom just is really good. Uh, he wins face-offs. His t giveaway to takeaway ratio is fine. He hits a lot. Good face-off percentage. 60 points per season, pretty much guaranteed. 20-plus goals. He scored a lot of that on the power play last year, but he finally got some good ice time. So I feel like 16 minutes a night is fine for him. Uh, and then I feel like Veselainen last year was... He did improve uh, with more ice time. McTavish got 19 minutes a night and put up 52 points. So I want to keep giving him as much ice time as I possibly can. He's got He hits a lot. Good giveaway to takeaway ratio. Peyton Krebs, we got him in year number one. Good, I mean, he also hits a lot. He doesn't block a lot of shots, but good giveaway to takeaway ratio. Only played 15 minutes and 46 points. Was a minus two, but I'm going to give him that extra bit of ice time. So, special teams. Tomasino, McTavish, Zegris, Santivori, McDonald. Fine by me. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to play Drysdale down here because I feel like McDonald's the future offensive defenseman of this team. With the X-Factor ability of one team and elite edges, sure. Krebs, Strom, Comtois, Veselin, and Drysdale. I am totally fine with that. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. I guess Perot had a season in the spotlight. I don't know. Plus 21, 44 points. Kind of feel like he got carried a bit, though. Uh, bad, bad giveaway to takeaway ratio for sure. Um, Veselainen, I think he had a good takeaway to giveaway ratio as well. Yeah, he has a really good one. Uh, Santavori, how was your giveaway to takeaway ratio? Not too tremendously bad. Uh, and then Zegers is elite. So we might have a really, really good first line, guys. But... That's all the time I have for this one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one.